making all that money, surely some should go back to the consumers rather than shelling out to the shareholders. Well, some of it will be going back to the consumers because as profits rise, then the tax on profits uh, has increased returns. So the, the picture for Centrica is the same as any other company. In a year that they're doing well, they make good profits and they give back to the country. And the years where they do poorly, which has they have done in recent times, that doesn't happen. Uh, so the starting position for any company is a level playing field. We all get taxed if we're in business and those business taxes and the income taxes on employees and everything else goes towards contributing dividends to the country from that success. Yeah, that, that's sort of corporation well, tax. But look, as you know, there was discussion about a windfall tax. And what was said uh, by Rishi Sunak, amongst others, we shouldn't really be imposing a windfall tax because it actually prevents them from investing in the industry and, and investing back in North Sea gas and oil. That's not happened. It's just gone straight to the shareholders. I wish we would see some consistency from the former Chancellor and indeed uh, the current administration on this point. Windfall taxes are generally a bad idea. The one time that that's not true is when it's correcting a policy mistake that the government themselves has made and trying to claw back some of the money that that mistake has helped give to the companies. Well, in the case of oil and gas companies, there's no mistake. There's already windfall taxes on the North Sea. And those were in operation when the third windfall tax was brought in this year. So that didn't need to happen. Right. The policy mistake that they've made is on renewables, specifically old renewables, about 80 percent of which operate under something called the renewables obligation. And that means that companies like Centrica, Scottish Power and other renewable generators get profit margins that before the crisis were about 50 percent. After the crisis, they're shooting up 100 percent, 150 percent, 200 percent. These are things for which there is a case for a windfall tax because it's the mm. government's own foolish error. And the reason they're not doing it is because they've got themselves into this totally crazy position where everything green is good and sainted and everything oil and gas needs to be punished. So they could do it. They could take these bills down a little bit, but they're not going to do it because they don't want to upset the green lobby. Right. OK. But I, I guess a lot of people at home will still be wondering how come Centra can, can make, uh, I think it's 1.34 billion profit in the first six months, Shell, the oil company, uh, a billion pounds profit for the same sort of period. Uh, we've seen petrol prices starting to come down a bit, but they're still really, really high. Well, Shell is a global super major oil and gas company, most of whose operations are not in the UK. They're not the largest player in the North Sea anymore. They'd have no interest in fracking because it's too small a proposition for them. Centrica is, a, again, an international company, some of whom's operations are not here. So those profits are for the entirety of the world. They're not just for the UK. And again, you have to look at the individual components as to whether or not something is the result of an unfair policy. OK, well, let's uh, look ahead to January. We've got these warnings uh, of about 3,900 and upwards. I mean, do you share that sort of uh, assessment of where we will be with the price cap? Yeah, I think we published a estimate uh, only this week and immediately it's out of date. I mean, this just is the brutal reality of where we are. Uh, unless the government actually does something to increase domestic supplies of gas, we have no defence against these rising prices for the foreseeable future other than imports. And everybody wants the imports. We're competing with Europe. We're competing with Africa. We're competing with China. Everybody's bidding for the same stocks and resources. And what we know from the negotiations that have happened so far is the world's major producer that's not Russia, Saudi Arabia, thinks they've reached capacity. Uh, it may not be true. But certainly you see Macron, for example, today meeting uh, with the leader of Saudi Arabia in order to try and get the same kind of deal that Johnson tried to get last month. So it's a really difficult situation. But the one thing we could be doing, yeah. drilling more in the North Sea, onshore fracking, not overtaxing investors who want to do both of those things. We are not doing. We're doing the opposite. And they're dithering, as Nadine Doris says, because they don't want to make any major policy announcements. Well, even that's not true. What the business secretary did in the last week was approve Sizewell C, a nuclear power station. Why on earth is it that he can approve a nuclear power station his own advisors told him not to do, but he can't get the fracking stuff moving? Doesn't make a lot of sense, and they are being skittish.